Hello and welcome to Bastion and Broadcasting. Back after last week's cancelled stream because of technical difficulties, but fingers crossed today things are looking all right. We're looking like we've got a relatively stable bandwidth, as much as we can hope for anyway. So today I'm doing what I was meant to do last week. So I wanted to talk about a video game that I think really exemplifies something that I have been going on about for a while now. So it's something that's in Electric Bastion and there's a, a, uh, a little essay at the back of the book about it. Um, I did a blog post on it a while ago and it's something that I keep harping on about, which is the idea that in tabletop role playing games, the three kind of pillars of making a game feel satisfying for the players, from my point of view, is information, choice, impact. And rather than me, you know, treading over the same ground that I've written about before, I wanted to sort of show this in context with uh, this video game called Into the Breach, which is a couple of years old now. Um, if you are not familiar with it, it is a mech-based, turn-based strategy game. But it does something really interesting. First of all, I, I fully recommend this game. Um, I will also confess that I'm not very good at this game. Um, anybody that's been a that's had the pleasure of playing chess with me while I've been having a little bit of resurgence into chess, much like the rest of the world has. Um, anybody that's playing at chess will realise that I am not necessarily great at like tactical awareness. Like I'm not very good at spotting. <laughs> Um, threats and things like that I'll often just blunder a piece away well this game makes me feel like I'm at times it makes me feel like I'm like a chess grandmaster it makes me feel clever and the way it does that is pretty interesting I think so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump straight into a game um, you know I, I was I thought about putting it on easy so I can talk while we play but we'll risk it uh, I'm not gonna play this squad because uh, I'm not very good with them. Um, so these are our our teams that we can choose from. We're going to be mechs. We're going to be fighting giant bugs, and we're going to be trying to protect uh, protect civilians. Um, let's use let's use these guys. Okay, let's go. Now with these gameplay based videos, I'm thinking about the format a little bit because I've done a few of these now. I'm not going to try and front end all of the information <laughs> i'm going to try and like talk about stuff as it emerges so i'm going to be talking about information choice and impact and how this game manages them but um but i'm not i'm not going to overload you with like the entire sort of essay ahead of time if you get what i mean so um let's jump into a, a battle i'm not going to bore you with all the details here we go So the first of the three things that I'm going to be talking about is information. So let's just put these mechs down somewhere for now. Actually, let's do, let's do that. Okay. Um, so information. So the one thing you may well notice immediately is that the board is very similar. I mean, I've called it a board, which tells you everything. It's uh, the map is very familiar if you're used to playing chess. It's an eight by eight board um, divided into squares. And the thing that this game does, out of all the three pillars that I'm gonna be talking about, the information, choice, and impact, this game, more than any other strategy game I think I've played, get the information side of things just right so i'm always saying that you know if in doubt when you're running a tabletop role-playing game if in doubt give the players more information than you think you should be giving them and this game is a really good example of that so it goes both ways first of all the you know the map is very clear to see it's all it's all on one screen 
you don't need to worry about well what's what's up here beyond the edge of the screen there's no, there's nothing this is the entire map and if you if you hover over a, a piece of uh, terrain in the bottom right you can see it tells you what it is tells you what it does all the very standard stuff what you also get is what your mechs can do there's no like random chance to it so this flame mech here I can see that their move is three they're immune to fire and they're massive um, but their attack it just does straight damage there's no rolling here so it's kind of familiar if you've if you're familiar with how damage works in electric bastion and in interviard you know i wanted it to be more predictable well here it's gone a step further and this is where i'm going to put in my weekly disclaimer that i say every time that i look at a video game and every time i talk about the things that you can take from this game for your role-playing game obviously the the two mediums of like tabletop role-playing game and computer-based strategy game they don't mash up mesh together perfectly so something that works very well in a video game might not work in a tabletop game and vice versa so really i'm not looking at this as like here are some concrete examples of things you can do in your game it's more about showing why i think this is so important because in this game the fact that the information is so clear it means that every mistake you make is your own fault and you always have enough information to make an interesting choice so as well as seeing what my mechs can do so this this guy can you know you even get a little nice animation with the pop up showing exactly how the weapon works it's going to knock the enemy back it's going to set them on fire and if they're already on fire it'll damage them i can also click on an enemy and i can see what their attack does so it'll bite you for three points of damage which is pretty terrible if it's an enemy that's shooting you can see exactly where the shot's going and you can see how much damage it's going to cause to the, the victim and if it's a melee based enemy you can see exactly who they're attacking and how much it's going to hurt them you can see where the enemies extra enemies are going to arrive on the next turn and you can even see the order that the enemies are going to attack so this firefly down here is going to shoot his horrible bug shot the leaper is going to attack and then the hornet is going to attack and this is all important for reasons that will become clear so you know what i'm going to do a round now and uh, and see what i can do so let me just remind myself how these guys work so he sets somebody on fire and knocks them out of the way um he will set you on fire and do damage to you he will swap positions i believe with the enemy um and the thing that i should have said the most important thing here is um we're not trying to wipe out these bugs i'll, I'll get to the objectives but you can see up here our objectives are to destroy the dam and to block the vec from spawning so block these spawn points and our overall objective across the entire game is to survive till the end of the battle so i can see here at the end of four turns all the enemies will go away and that will be a victory for us and we also want to protect these buildings this is the key of it to the game so every time we lose one of these buildings our grid power grid up here loses a point and if it reaches zero it's game over so that that's a bit of an info dump i know i said i wasn't going to do an info dump but there's a lot there that i think will make sense if you're thinking about <laughs> why i think this is a an interesting game for rpgs so here's what i'm going to do this this guy doesn't concern me because i can see that he's just attacking here so if, if i move out the way i will be fine um he's shooting towards two of my mechs but if, if i were to move these two out of the way the shot would just go to nowhere this is the guy that's bothering me so i'm going to want to set him on fire 
and you might think, well, he's going to attack there, but fire damage occurs at the start of the enemy turn, so he will he'll burn to death. He's fine. Now, with these ones, it's it's just a kind of a case of getting out of the way. But it's also about thinking, what can I actually achieve here? So I'm going to move this guy here to block the spawn point. And then I'm going to... Hmm. See, I would, I would love to be able to set one of these on fire, but if I do that here, I'm going to get shot by the bug. But I, I think it's worth it. So... All three units have acted. He hasn't used his weapon, but I'm not really in a position to use it. Um, and there we go, end turn. And then the enemy turn happens, but here's the thing. We already know what the enemy is going to do. So we knew that was going to happen. We factored it into our plan. We knew that we were going to get hit by the Vec trying to spawn up out of the ground. And we factored all of that in. And if you're like me, and if you played chess and what happens when I play chess? I know I wrote a blog post about this recently, but when I play chess, what tends to happen is I feel like I've got a solid grasp on like the principles of what I should be doing. And I'll, I'll start developing my pieces and I'll think I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying laying my plan. And then I will move my queen somewhere and leave, leave her hanging and a bishop will just take her out of nowhere. And I didn't see the bishop. And obviously that is on me. And that is me being a bad chess player. There's no question there, but it feels like, unsatisfying whereas if i make it to the end of a match and somebody outplays me then it's a different feeling it feels like i've been bested on we're playing the same game it's not just that i happen to uh, collapse <laughs> at a certain point um but because this game gives you all the information you you never you can i mean that you can see what's threatened it, it puts a big red flashing light on the uh the units that are being threatened here so we know that this piece over here, again, I'm calling them pieces and boards, but this uh, this mech over here isn't being um, threatened. And we know that this one is. So we've got a real dream situation here where if we swap places, these two are going to attack each other. And we can even see... Uh, well, this that, you know what? They're not going to attack each other because this one's going to burn to death before the end. Um, we need to start... We need to start damaging this dam, which is going to be tricky because we don't really have many weapons that do direct damage. I'm not sure if I can set the dam on fire. Let's see. Can I set the dam on fire? I think that means no. <laughs> there's also a generous undo system, and there's even a reset turn system. So if you want to, once per battle, you could just reset your entire turn and say, I actually, I, need to, I want to start again because I've made a mistake here. Um, okay, well, in that case, we'll just set this one on fire. It's always good to have more enemies on fire. Um, this one here, it's, it's a bit of a problem, but we're just going to, like, take the hit. And I believe that's everyone. And this is what I mean when I say it feels like you're a chess grandmaster. You've got information at your fingertips to make all these plans. But this is quite a simple board state at the minute. So as you play into further missions in the game, you're going to get slightly more complex enemies. You're going to get more tools at your disposal. But it's still set on those same principles of you, you will always know what the enemy is going to do. So... The fact that I know that this one is going to be attacking me is uh, is fine. Um, so, so far, the only building that we have to worry about is, or Max, is that this one's going to cause a problem to us, but we can punch him out of the way. And we know that he's going to burn on at the end of the round. Um, we could do with getting rid of this guy, because he's giving everybody a bit of armor. 
if we could move to here we could do something clever by swapping around but he's gonna burn anyway so I think our good simple approach here is just to set him on fire and then we'll do hmm see we only have one health left here so what we'll do is we'll move there so now the enemy is going to be blocking the next spawn point I think we're safe there. We're, we're going to struggle to destroy this dam. Which brings me to my next point. So we spoke a little about information here. And how this game gives you... It, it gives you all the information you could want about what's happening right now. You know, some of it you have to... You have to like... You have to hold on it to, to get the information. But it's all there. And the really key information like things that are about to get attacked that is all presented you know super clearly there are some unknowns but i think the things that are unknown it handles for the most part pretty well so i'll get to the sort of the unknown the things that it chooses not to tell you about when we get to the next round so at the end of this round we can see this one has got one health left they're going to burn this one will not burn to death um, I think what we would like to do is knock them back so they're not going to be attacking our building it doesn't matter if we don't kill them remember this is this is another thing that I like so you remember I spoke about choice being like the second key here Often you'll have like multiple objectives that you can achieve in the battle, but you can't, you, you sometimes can't achieve them all. I imagine you can if you're very, very good, but you'll get yourself into situations if you're anything like me where you just, you just can't. Um, let's just wrap this one up then. So we'll do that and then we'll, um, we just need to get out of the way here. We'll repair ourselves. So. The choice is the next thing I was going to say and because you have this information <clears throat> you don't have to spend so much time worrying about the unknowns there are unknowns to think about but when you have all that information the choices almost like create themselves I know that sounds sounds ridiculous but um if you get the information right, I find the other two steps kind of follow kind of naturally for the most part. So let's let's press on. I'm gonna I'm gonna just play another round. And then I'll talk a little bit more about choices. In a if I can be um <clears throat> if I can be candid for a moment. Can I say that these levers are absolute bastards? Um, so he's not doing it now, but the one bit of this game where I'm like, I, I wonder if this was too frustrating a thing to put in, and I feel like this is the way that I lose. If, if I do lose, I find that it's, it's because of like a single ability in the game. And that is some enemies can web you, so they can essentially tie you up. And you can't move until either they get damaged or knocked out of the way or you get moved out of the way so you know you, you find situations where two of your mechs are kind of tied up and you're using your third mech to like free one of them and it, it yeah that, that's uh that's my own pet peeve it's not a complaint about the game uh, so he's not attacking this one is attacking the buildings which is bad and we can do a little cheeky switcheroo here. No, we don't want to do that. So blocking these <clears throat> spawn points is always a good thing to do. We don't need to worry about the train too much because the train is pretty safe right now. As long as we... Yeah, that's fine. So let's take care of some of these bugs. So we're going to push this one back onto the spawn point. Of 
we're going to set this one on fire. And we're just going to move this one out of the way a little bit. Right, so when we do put ourselves in like a, a potential blunder situation to use the chest analogy, it gives you like a giant <laughs> um, explosion symbol so that we can see it's going to crash. This train that we're trying to protect is going to hit our um, our meteor mech uh, next if we, if we don't do something about it. Um, this guy, what's he doing? He's fine, so I think we've got a great situation here where we can swap these guys around. I mean, we can just finish this now, to be honest. And then... See, the game all constantly puts you in situations where you have to think about which cost you're willing to pay. So I can set this bug here on fire. And these floating ones are bad because they like buff all the other bugs. But if I do that, I'm going to push my other mech into the mountain, which is going to cause damage. You know what? I don't think I don't think I need to. I think I need to worry about him. I know what I can do. So I don't have a great move here. So it's often quite good to just light the spawn point on fire so that when something comes out of there, it's going to already be on fire, which is, which is good for us. Okay, so we can wrap this up pretty handily we're going to take a bit of a hit but it's the last round I'm going to do my favourite thing which is I know that I've damaged my own mech to do it but pushing enemies into the water is a pleasure There we go. So, I know I've been mainly focused on information. Choice. You might not have seen at the start of the game, I got to choose from like four islands, which all have different kind of special factors in place. But even for each mission, I get I get information, and which helps me make an informed choice. So. The little symbols that are on the map tell me what the reward is for completing that mission. It also tells me what's going to be happening on that mission. So whether I'm defending some tanks, protecting a coal plant. And in this mission, you can see that there's a lower reward, but it's a bit easier because you've got some, um, you've got some shields that will help you and air support that will help you. Um, so you're always given this choice. It's like you can make the game difficult as long as you give people choices is what how i always feel if people lose the game or die in a role playing game and they feel like they have no choice like they they walked to the next planned encounter and that encounter was either too hard for them or it was just like not a good fit for their character so they ended up dying because they felt like they had no choice but to fight this monster then it's going to feel rubbish but if you say, okay, well, there are three directions you can go, and this way is much easier, but there's a lower reward, 
these two are more difficult but you know the reward is greater if they go there and die they know that they could have you know ran away and attempted one of the other missions so we'll, we'll go for the easy one just just to demonstrate what i mean now this is like a terrible combination <laughs> of monsters in here of, of, uh, of bugs so see what i mean they, they 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 will tie you up and now these can't move until i damage them i think i think it's damage and again this is another example of where i'm unsure about an effect i can just go onto my um my webbed unit they cannot move but they can still attack okay so it's actually not telling me how to unweb myself so i put too much faith in the game there um what i would love to do is knock this guy onto the spawn point to block that and then this unit here is going to die because these yellow squares are where the airstrike is going to come in so he's going to get blown up before you can do anything so i would quite like to swap yeah it's not ideal but i'll light him on fire it's, it's damaged my own mech but i'll take it Oh, I can see an opportunity for my favourite thing. We'll knock him into the water. Um, unfortunately, this guy is flying, so we can't do that. But we will set him alight. And we'll do a little bit of repair. In fact, we'll, we'll move on to the water. For reasons that will become clear and we'll repair. <clears throat> so talked about information talked about choice um that th there's much more going on in this game with choice than i've perhaps let on this is this looks like a bad situation but it's not too bad so choice I i've said it's easy to think of choice as like the choice between m m lots of good things but like i say it gives you so many situations where like now where i've got to choose i've got to prioritize something so i might not be able to stop all of my mechs getting hit and stop all of my buildings getting hit it's a very simple objective here i've got to protect the coal plant but i need to think what is actually important here If your mech gets destroyed i should say in one of these battles they will still be in the rest of the the game but you lose your pilot so you lose like usually a little perk that comes with each pilot um annoyingly none of them are in the uh <laughs> none of them are in the danger zone here so i feel like i don't have much of a choice here but to to do that so I'm still going to get hit, but it's fine. And then this is actually a lot more straightforward than I was expecting. I've been a little bit dumb here. So if you reach this situation where you're like, I'm thinking I've slightly messed this up, you can reset the turn once per battle. So let's do that. So let's think. If I do that... And that building is safe then i do that and that building is safe then i'm actually going to swap <clears throat> with this guy and then now he's attacking nothing and again using that was a choice <laughs> giving me like one use resources like that er, 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 is, is a good interesting choice to, to put on the player so I'm going to try and wrap this battle up and then I'll get on to talking about impact. This is a bad situation, I have to say. Oh, and he's webbed, which is a real pain. Okay, let's 
let's rescue him because I think this is going to be this is going to be a good opportunity here and then hear me out a little bit of this and we're, we're in the clear So impact, small things like what you can see now coming out of the buildings. Um, all of the decisions that you make in this game have consequences. I've said about how you can't achieve everything, like you can't always achieve all your objectives, but the choices you make about which of your objectives you're gonna achieve, they have lasting impact not to a huge degree like the fact that you didn't blow up that dam in one of the previous missions it's not going to come back in a specific way but it, it's all building up in the background and it's 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 generating your sort of bonuses if you like but it goes a little bit further than that because i think the way that this game it, a lot of it comes from the flavor in this game you know there are long-term consequences in that you know you you get reactor cores and you can upgrade your mechs and your you know your pilots gain experience points which gives them new perks but really it's about the feel of the game and the way that this war against these bugs is presented so you can see that the map is just like filling up with with red and um let's have Let's take this one. So, it, this is more a case of small things that affect flavor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play through this battle. I'm just gonna point out things as they happen. I also love this rain effect. Like it's, it's, this game is just an absolute joy to look at. It makes me, it makes me want like a little physical set of these maps with these little mechs. Like I was thinking today, I was like, oh, a tabletop version would be so cool but it wouldn't work because this has been built for its medium so specifically because of the information overlays are so clear i think you just couldn't have it you couldn't it couldn't it wouldn't work in the same way if you were playing on a tabletop with like this, this beautiful little miniature miniature battle map it just wouldn't work so i want to get rid of this guy early on so let's do that and that and you know what let's Let's put all our eggs in one basket down here. So little speech bubbles will pop up out of the buildings. I don't know if you just saw. So these civilians that we're losing, you're just given like a subtle little nod that these are real people. Um, I might try and deliberately, well, it's very telling that I, I don't want to deliberately let one of these buildings get destroyed, but I will. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let this bug shoot that building. Um, Right. I say that, I don't know if I can. No, I, I can't really. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh do this because I, I do want to actually win here. So I'm gonna push this guy in the water because of course I am. And then let's just light this guy on fire. So you'll see that when I'm not actually trying to explain what I'm doing, <laughs> you can run through a battle very quickly. 
That's the other thing that I, I'm going to keep comparing this game to chess just because I happen to be playing both these games at the same time at the moment. Um, and when I talk about the problem with chess, what I'm talking about is my particular problem with chess. <laughs> like, I still enjoy playing chess a lot, but it's when I talk about the problems. Oh, fuck. I've just pressed the end turn button. So we'll see now. Watch as this building gets destroyed. And watch what happens. Ah, oh, well, it resisted. Let's let's see if I can let another one get blown up here. Right, let's just um, see if I can put an end to this. So watch the um, watch the building. There we go. These little speech balls that pop up, they 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 add a little bit of humanity to the building, and you're given like a a, a number for civilians protected here, and it just makes it all feel a little bit more like real. And because it, it's a very abstract, you know, you're looking at this from like a satellite view almost, or like drone view at least. And it would be easy for it to feel very abstract. And um, there we go. We lost a pilot. Um, it would be easy to think of this as being very abstract and like cold. So no matter what we do as well, when we reach the end of the island, there's always going to be like three regions that get destroyed by the Vec. There's nothing you can do about it. Like, you're fighting a losing war. So the impact feels very <laughs> feels very brutal. Um, and then let's let's do the final mission. So we're trying to get this big guy here. Now, unfortunately, most of the boss units, you can't just drop them in the water. Which is a shame, because that would be... That would be fantastic if we could. However, we can dunk this guy in the water. Now, we would like to push this unit back. Then we would like to light this unit on fire. And you reach a point where you actually get to the point where you're glad when they're attacking your mech rather than attacking one of these buildings. Because at least your mech, you can either move out of the way or, you know, if, if you take a few hits with your mech, you're fine at the end of the battle. Whereas buildings, like, once they're gone, you've got to, like, earn those grid points back. So what happens if I dunk him in the water? It prevents attacking, but I don't want to because he'll... No longer be on fire. I do want to put him on this um, spawn point. That would be great. Don't know if that will work because actually he's going to charge forward. But, you know, it gets him out of the way. Right, we can dunk him in there. Ah, uh, yeah. So we haven't blocked as well as I would like. Two turns left and this is the this is the worrying part I mean can we just there we go if we knock him back he'll die at the start of his turn so that's fine then this one becomes a problem We don't have a great way. We can do this. There we go. And then with this unit, we can just block. If in doubt.
So the last turn to survive. I mean, these are, are setting themselves up here, frankly. So if I swap here, then we've got like a, a crossfire situation going on. But this is where the attack order becomes so important. So that's fine. That's going to work out okay for us. And then we just want to get rid of him. Or at least block him. Which we can't really do. We're just going to have to block. But that's fine. I would like to set this one on fire. It doesn't disrupt our plan. There we go. There we go. Perfect. So that is the general loop, if you like, of um, Into the Breach. Um, you get new abilities and you can, you know, you get these reactor cores which you can buy and you know, new weapons and, but that's, it's all very cool. And don't get me wrong, I would absolutely recommend this game. Um, I'm going to upgrade these because I might, I might carry on playing after this stream ends. <laughs> I do like the long range swap here. And let's give him a bit of extra move as well. And then when you leave, this is why I was talking about how you can, you know, you can choose which island to go to. And when you've completed two islands, you can either try and move to like the end game or you can you can keep on fighting, which sort of brings its own risk, but with extra reward. And you can even see on each island the threat scanner at the bottom. You can even see like what enemies are there. So if you imagine like almost like if you're playing like D and D type thing. You know, giving your player the choice giving your players the choice of three environments they can go to three potential treasure locations or you know three dungeons if you want to get really basic and you know say okay well there's this one contains this and this and this this other dungeon there's just one very powerful monster in there and the other dungeon there's no monsters just deadly traps i know that sounds like you're having to pre prepare three times as much work but it's one of those things where once you've got those things in the bank you can kind of draw on that bank of ideas but giving that player the choice it just means that when you go in it feels a lot more fair and they feel like they have it had agency in that decision it's not just a case of you are in front of a and, and i've done this don't get me wrong i do this all the time you know putting them in front of the dungeon door and say right you're here's the cave that you're going into to try and get the treasure and if you don't go in there's no game you know go ahead and then they go in and then they're sneaking through the dark and then there's a monster a few rooms in and it's you know it comes out of nowhere and that can be that can be fun and that can be a surprise and that's kind of a staple of like dungeon crawling is like the mystery of what monsters are in there but something like this could it work with the tabletop game it being this open about the environment that you're going into and i think i think it could i think again i'm not saying there's there's not a perfect overlap between video games tabletop games but all i'm saying is if you're interested in this whole idea of information choice and impact then you know give into the breach a look it's been out for a, a couple of years now i've just realized i've had the uh, the volume down all this time and you've not been able to enjoy this wonderful soundtrack um yeah, check it out. I think it's it's good food for thought for anybody that's interested in this side of game design. Especially the information thing. I think that is key. I think give it a try and see how it presents that information. So with that in mind, I believe that's everything for tonight's stream. I'm going to do a slightly shorter one than normal. Um, thank you for watching and stay safe. <laughs>